to talk about crowdsourcing, uh, complaints, uh, disasters. And as was mentioned earlier, it ultimately comes down to politics. And so this talk is going to analyze the Indian political process. Well, a small part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Amit and uh, Sriram and everyone else for inviting me here. So um, I'm with Ashoka University. It's a relatively new university near Delhi, um, where I co-direct a center called the Trivedi Center for Political Data. It's named after Ashok Trivedi, a wealthy donor who gave us money to fund the center for 10 years. Um, and we also have one of my students is here, Saloni from Ashoka is here. She's, so I'm presenting the work of many, many students and other faculty members and staff. Um, so this center was started in uh, 2016 uh, by a couple of us from computer science and political science. So it's a joint venture. I think it's really worked very well because when we started, uh, I mean, I didn't know anything about politics. I think the political science uh, people didn't know much about data management. But we have learned a lot from each other. So in that sense, it's been quite successful. Um, the mission is to understand um, Indian political processes and governmental processes better through data. So one of our common um, theses was that uh, there isn't enough informed discourse in India. So people will have a certain theory about you know what's happening to caste equations or what's happening to gender and so on across India. But even for something as basic as a political process, uh, there isn't good hard data that you can base uh, opinions upon. So we want to enable data-driven discourse through data. We part of this is of course doing research ourselves. Uh, part of it is organizing data sets and providing them for uh, journalists, for students, researchers, whoever is interested in it, uh, and disseminating that information. Um, so this is all uh, sort of properly gathered, uh, somewhat treated quality check data. Uh, we're of course strictly non-partisan, um, and we, are a, we, are, we have a research orientation. We collaborate with several universities, uh, typically in political science uh, across the world. Uh, we have seven staff, about 20 students, like I mentioned, and we're hiring. So if, if you have students, postdocs, uh, people interested in this general space, do refer them to us. Um, so I'll talk about a couple of projects today. The first one is called uh, Lok Dhaba. Uh, it's a play on Lok Sabha, obviously. Um, this, is a, this is a data set that you can look at right now at our, at our website. Uh, but what we have done is essentially collated Indian elections data going back uh, to 1962. Uh, and for all the state and central elections until then, we have uh, gathered the data, integrated it, cleaned it, made it easy to visualize, download, and so on. So this is one place where you can find information about um, everyone who has contested an election at the central or the state level. We don't go to the local level yet. Uh, uh, so much of this data actually is available on the Election Commission's website. Um, however, it's not in formats that are easy to consume. So for example, you will have uh, PDFs fi PDF files all over the place. Uh, you, they'll be highly inconsistently organized or inconsistently formatted. Uh, they won't be in a way that you can actually perform uh, analysis on them. So we are trying to solve that problem. Um, um, there, are, there is no data quality checking, like I said. So they have legacy data which they've collected over the ages, but they rarely go back and look at uh, previous elections. So one of, the, um, one of the, the distinguished fellows we have at the center is Dr. S.Y. Qureshi, the former Chief Election Commissioner of India. So he's uh, been very um, supportive and helps to educate us about you know, what the uh, processes inside the election commission or what the constraints and capabilities are. Uh, okay, so we have taken this data and we have made it available in this interface. So uh, just like you might see on um, a news channel during elections, we can, you can generate your own graphs of graphs and maps of uh, you know, how various parties <laughs> did, what was the turnout in various constituencies, uh, what was the gender ratio, things like that. Um, but you can ask this for any election going back to 1962, and you can um, sort of build your own visualization. Uh, so this is a, you know, these are some maps. There are some uh, graphs and so on. And then, uh, but behind it all is a, a lot of systematic quality checking of the data. So for example, uh, when we put together all the election commission data, we find that there are inconsistencies like you know, same party, same election, same constituency, you have multiple people from the same uh, 
from the same party, which is not possible, right? So they have some data entry error somewhere, or they have some some problem in their ingest process. Uh, inconsistent uh, constituency type, like constituencies are divided in India according to general SC or ST, and within delimitations, that type is not supposed to change. Uh, but we find cases where they, where they do change. So these are a bunch of checks that our uh, political scientists thought of, or we thought of, and encoded on this spreadsheet. So now that you have a database of sorts, um, it's not actually a very big database in the sense of big data. It's only about 2 million rows. So we're talking of all candidates who ever contested, not just the winners. Everyone who's ever contested an election at the state or the center level. Um, uh, so we, we wrote down, these are all simple consistency checks to write, and we, then, then we find these problems. We refer them back to the election commission and so on. We also try and integrate different sources, so things like um, wh whoever the election commission deems to be a winner should correlate with whoever ends up in the Lok Sabha, right? <laughs> um, but we find that the Lok Sabha records actually say something different. Mostly it's a Lok Sabha problem, actually. The election commission is relatively clean. Uh, their data is relatively clean. Uh, but the Lok Sabha has various, you know, gotchas, various problems, various, e e sometimes there are processes that we don't know about or that are very, um, um, uh, very, very kind of mysterious or, or unknown process, particularly in the earlier years. So for example, and the reason we don't go be beyond 1962 is that before then there were actually multiple winners per seat uh, in some cases, because some seats had uh, special uh, members for scheduled castes or even in, in some cases for certain communities. Uh, so it gets very, very messy before then, but after 1962, it's relatively clean. Um, so I, I'll come back to this later when I mention the kind of um, work that computer science research can enable over here. So this is the Lok Sabha website, and, and the general problem is given one data source and another data source, how do you map, uh, map entries that are mostly, mostly similar um, um, and, and integrate data that way? Um, another big problem is there isn't a single identifier for a person in the political process. So if you have a, uh, even a Narendra Bodhi who's contested in one election and in the next, you don't know whether it's the same person or not because it could be a relatively common name. And the number of uh, you know, people with very common names, especially in states like Punjab and Uttar Pradesh is, is not funny. Um, so uh, because of this, political scientists can't ask questions that they're very interested in, like, you know, what's happening with respect to incumbency over time? Are there more people entering the political process or less? How long do they stay on average and things like that? Uh, what are the trends along, you know, age or caste, gender, um, region? What are the differences there and so on? So we have built a, uh, what's essentially an entity resolution tool uh, to help map people who are the same across uh, different, uh, um, different elections, and I'll, I'll skip through it quickly. Uh, basically, if you look at the literature, entity resolution is kind of a solved problem, but when you look for a tool that you can actually give political scientists that they can use, there aren't many. So we have built a tool that factors in approximate Indian name matching um, to, to help resolve these rows and so on. So if you're interested, come talk to me later about it. Um, I want to mention a second project we did in the context of smart cities with the city of Hubli Dharwad in North Karnataka. Uh, it so happens that I, I live there um, and I had some connections to the city and, and so when the smart city proposals were being worked out a couple of years ago, uh, I told them that every other city was having a, hackath uh, having a marathon and a walkathon and all that. I said, we'll have a hackathon. And so because everyone was interested in preparing the smart city proposal, they gladly gave a lot of data to us, uh, which was very interesting. So uh, we, we, of course, you know, we told them about this thing about five star open data, which Tim Berners-Lee has been talking about. Uh, one star is when you just put the data out, make it available without the need for RTIs and things like that, uh, to linked open data, which is the five star, and then it's uh, integratable with other uh, data sources and so on. Uh, so a couple of my students built this um, uh, app. It's a site called htworks.org. You can go and check it. Um, basically what it is, it's a list of all spending by the city, uh, which is of course is supposed to be all public and RTIable, except it's not actually consumable and usable by most people. So you can, 
in, in this case, for the city of Hubli Tharwad, you can look over all the works. You can see who's the contractor, what's the uh, source of funding, what's the amount, and so on. Um, you can, we've provided ways that you can geotag. You can say this work was done on this road and this much money was spent on it. Um, you can have officials upload pictures of the work that was done. So the officials will say, yeah, this money was sanctioned for the road. That's, that's the road. But there's also a way for citizens to give feedback. And then the citizens will tell you that the road is actually something like this. <laughs> um, uh, so this is very useful for, you know, let's say the municipal commissioner to look at what's happening across the city. Uh, so that's what we're trying to enable and trying to study crowdsourcing and citizen involvement in that context. Uh, we have sort of standing queries, so you can subscribe to a certain work or a certain ward and get information when there is an update about a work happening in that ward and so on. Uh, so I see I am out of time and I'm going to skip through this last part to... Uh, I, I'll just take half a minute to mention computer science problems in particular. So uh, easing data collection and analysis from loosely structured sources, whether it's web or other sources, that's a, it's a long-standing problem, but something that we've experienced uh, painfully over the last couple of years. Uh, automatic generation of data quality checks. So I mentioned a few data quality checks that we thought about and, and enforced on the election data set. <laughs> Uh, but what if uh, you could have tools that sort of do data mining, anomaly detection, and things like that, and figure out that this is a likely check that two uh, people from the same party can't contest in the same election uh, in the same year, in the same constituency? Uh, can you join similar columns? Like I have, I have a Lok Sabha data set, I have an election commission data set. They're mostly the same, but there are differences for, you know, whether it's in spelling or for other reasons. Can I have a loose join, uh, an interactive join where I can say 90% of your data is okay, 5% is okay, modulo, spelling corrections, and so on. 5% is something you need to look at. This is something that Saloni, for example, spent a month on, and can we automate this process? Can you have conversational interfaces data? So it seems like you know, we, can ha we can talk to our phones, we can talk to our rooms, and so on, with Siri and things like that. Can you instead have uh, political scientists or others talking to data sets in natural language? Can they express these, whether it's quality checks or queries, uh, in, in natural language. Um, okay, and then we, we are doing a bunch of work on user interfaces and so on. So I'll skip that. You can contact me later if uh, you have questions. I'm also here today and tomorrow. So thank you.